Hi everyone, this is Mukta Sharma. In this video, we are going to discuss about one very important topic which many of you have asked me. In a real-time project, how do we choose test cases for automation testing and when do we choose them? So there is a one shorts available on my channel in which I have explained how do you select test cases for automation testing. In that video, I have given highlights of the points what you should be taking care of while selecting the test cases. And in that video itself, I got lots of comments where people were asking me to explain more about it or maybe, you know, um, create a detailed video on that so that it will be easier for you to identify test cases for automation. So this document I have prepared based on my own experience working in a product based company as a QA automation test engineer when I was working and we had this web uh, e-commerce web based application where we tested the, you know, front end and we did API testing and uh, we did uh, uh, this regression test suite and uh, smoke test build also. <clears throat> <clears throat> even mobile testing also to some extent yeah so whatever i'm going to explain in this video you can make a note of it i am 100 percent sure that these tips will help you in you know in your real-time projects should the application be manually tested already these are a couple of questions which i have written down uh, after you know checking all my uh, comments in the youtube uh, on the videos should the application be manually tested already should the application be stable when do we know when to automate the app? At what stage in software development cycle we uh, automate the app? Is there any specific criteria on the basis of which we uh, select test cases? Somebody even said, I'm a manual tester and I have just joined this project. We have 100 plus test cases and I don't know how to automate and from where to start, what to start. We want to implement automation testing using Selenium web driver. So what should be my first step? So these are the questions sent by you. Now let's start. Okay. First, first, what I have written is choose test cases that gives the maximum automation value with minimum effort. What does it mean? We should be automating only those test cases which are repeated often in like the regression test cases, right? You and me, both of us know that what are regression test cases and we have to execute it almost after every build. So those test cases are repeated often. We can automate them. Low on UI changes. When we say that the application should be stable first, it means it, it means that it should not crash. At least, you know, uh, as a manual uh, test, quick check, you should just try to launch the app and see if it is, you know, opening properly, if there are very less uh, UI changes. That That is meant by stable application. You cannot automate an app if it is crashing oftenly, right? You cannot automate an app which is just like you opened it and it crashed. So at least just, just do a quick check before you start automating. Core functionalities, high impacted areas in the app, easy to automate, not too many uh, pop-ups or capture. These are the difficult uh, stuff. So I have just written like, you know, captcha is a little difficult to uh, uh, automate. Now let's see what is the first step. Step number one, when to start automation testing. So these are a couple of conditions or not exact conditions, but a couple of points which you can take care of before you start working, before you start, you know, um, working on those test cases, which can be automated. One application should be functionally stable, as we discussed before. Manual testing of those features should have already uh, caught major bugs. What I meant to say is like it should not immediately crash. Then if it is like in that uh, front, it is um, stable, then you can think of automating that. There are no major UI changes expected in that module. See, I have written also stable application means the application is working as expected, does not crash and its UI and workflow aren't changing every few days. Then there is no point of doing it. <clears throat> E-commerce uh, application, because I have worked in uh, e-commerce web applications, so I have just given you that example. You can relate it with your project. Suppose you have a product test feature, product search feature on your website that is thoroughly tested manually, bugs are fixed, and no more UI updates are expected. You can, you know, uh, consider uh, that to automate. I mean, 
bugs, definitely you can catch through automation testing. The first motive should be to uh, check if the application is stable enough. Then you can you know, do all your feasibility study and uh, select test cases for automation. Somebody also asked, where does it fit in the picture? So during your test execution phase in the software testing lifecycle, and maybe if you're working in agile ways, you can start automating after the user story is marked done and pass manual QA. So, you know, it actually in real time, it happens like that. I don't know what is going around, what is what people are saying on social media. Actually, honestly, practically in real time, it works like that. You know, if you are working in Agile on the Scrum on the Scrum board, you have a user story. First, as soon as it comes to QA, what we do, we we will just see. Okay, what is the user story? If it is asking to check the search functionality, we would quickly do a manual check first. Okay, where do we have to go? Okay, this this is the thing, and then we have to click here, go to the search search pop up will open search uh, page will open, then we have to add all these details. There is a drop down. you have to select that value and then click on submit, then confirmation message is coming. We do that. In real time, we do that before automating. We, we At least as a human being, you will try to understand what is it about, right? How does it work? What is the user story? What is the main purpose? What is What is that we are trying to achieve? So everybody does that. I don't know what is going around on social media. Don't, uh, you know, uh, just follow people like that. How to select test cases for automation? So this is some criteria which I have written and the reason why. For example, high regression value, frequent changes in every sprint or every release. You can automate them. Stable and repetitive scenarios. High risk or critical functionality data-driven scenarios where same steps are repeated with different data. That type of uh, test cases you can automate. Not suitable for automation. Again, CAPTCHA and uh, complex UIs are not suitable for automation. I have not uh, done CAPTCHA automation in my experience. Kind of difficult. Uh, so yeah, this is one. And then uh, let's say you have 100 test cases. Maybe people are doing it, but uh, as an ideal practice, because it takes a lot of time and effort. So CAPTCHA is not suitable for automation. E-commerce application choosing test cases. There are like, these are some examples for your understanding. For example, feature, let's say login feature. What is the test case valid login functionality you are checking? You can automate it. Yes, you can automate it. Why do you think you can automate it? Because you can repeat this test in every run. Correct. So this is the best candidate for automation. Product search. You are searching a laptop with a specific keyword. What do you think? Can you automate it? Yes, you can automate it. It is repeatable. A user will definitely search for a product. Add to cart. Add single product to cart. This is again repeated. Yes. Can we automate it? Yes. Check out payment with real credit card. It might require third party integration. Could be difficult, so you can uh, keep it aside. Contact us, form with CAPTCHA. Again, CAPTCHA, we can leave it aside. Step number four. First step to start automation, hands on. This is for your own practice. If you are first time trying to you know, automate uh, things and you are trying to understand how does these things work, choose five to 10 stable test cases. Install your web driver around the machine, set up, do everything. And then um, after the script is ready, you can integrate it into your framework. This is the. Let's talk about one example. Let's say you have this login test, right? Manually test. How will you do? First, you will go to home page, click on login button, enter your email, enter your password, and then click on submit button. Then you will be redirected to the next page, whatever it is, dashboard or home page whatsoever. Right? This practically, if you think this, you will do, right? You will perform these steps and then you will convert this into, you will write automation script. Then you will say, okay, web driver driver is equal to new Chrome driver. It will launch an instance of the Chrome driver, then driver dot get. It will fetch the URL of the application. Then you will uh, locate the web element on that specific page. Then you will locate the web element of username and then, you know, um, add value through send keys, then password, then send keys. And then you will identify the web element button and then click on it. And then you will put a uh, assertion validation where you will uh, compare two things, right? 
in automation script, you will write like that. So this is the process. This is how you should do it. There are so many things more. Uh, let's discuss checklist for getting started. So first, what we have understood is application is uh, stable. It should not just crash immediately when you launch it. There should not be, uh, you know, very crashing or breaking features like that. At least it should be stable when you start a uh, first automation. Your manual testing, uh, when you when you do this login test manually, it should pass. If manually you just did and it is failing, then you will think, okay, uh, it's going to take a lot of time and all that stuff. So just try to, you know, give it a try. And then test environment is ready. Choose test cases using criteria. Start writing your script. Add them to framework. And then whatever is there, if CI pipeline is there, you can just integrate your test cases to the pipeline. So there is one more thing which I would like to discuss. It's called RISE. Okay, practical technique. It's called RISE. RISE means R, repetitive. I, important. S, stable. E, easy to automate. This you can implement when you are not sure which test cases needs to be automated. For example, R, repetitive. You can ask this question to yourself or maybe in the team if you are sitting in a team. Is this test run in every sprint or every regression cycle? If the answer is yes, you will consider the test case. Is this a feature business critical? Is Does this belong to a critical area? If the answer is yes, you will pick the test case for automation testing. Does the functionality or UI rarely change? Yeah, okay. So yes, you can consider that for automation. No captures. Okay, in this application, there are no captures. Let's automate that. So, you know, this technique you can use to identify test cases for automation. This is called RISE. R-I-S-E. Repetitive, important, stable, and easy to automate. I give you one example for your better understanding. You score each test case from 0 to 1 for each RISE factor. Let's say 1, we are saying yes, and 0, we are saying no. Let's say user login with valid credentials, right? So what do you think? Is it a repetitive test case in every sprint? Yes. So we can give it as number one. Do you think it is a business uh, uh, criteria area? Yes, it is. So we can consider it for automation. One point. Uh, does the UI rarely change in this case? No, it's not changing uh, that much frequently. So yes, we can definitely take it. E, easy to automate? Yeah. There are no captures around, we can take it. So in this way, if you point one, two, three, four, total is four. So automate, can you do it? Yes, you can do it. You know, this is for your uh, clarity, for your understanding. So like this, you can say, okay, yes, we can automate it. Then pick the test case for automation. Similarly, you can see other test cases. Contact us form has captcha. Let's say contact us form has captcha. So does it, um, is it, is the test run in every spin? Yes, it does. Is the um, feature critical? Um, CAPTCHA is critical? No, not that much. Not critical. I mean, if it is not there, it's okay. Business is not, you know, going to stop. Is is the UI really change? And is there is a CAPTCHA? Yes, there is a CAPTCHA. So in this case, there are total is two. So that means you cannot pick it for automation. Yeah. I hope uh, you are getting some idea what I'm trying to, you know, um, convey and uh, so that it will help you in your real time projects. Top 10 cases you can start if you are very new and you're thinking how to start. You have joined a company. There are so many test cases you are thinking you can use this technique and, you know, uh, get it going. Test, login with valid credentials, product search, add product to cart, apply filters, sign up, view order history, logout functionality. These are some of the test cases which you can start automating with. How to apply? This is I have written. List all 100 test cases in your you know, Excel. I think when I worked on it, we used Excel file. And then what we did, we also set up a column called priority, complexity. If this is high complex, medium complex, low complex, and then we give the numbering, whatever has the, whatever had the highest uh, numbering, we would automate them and the rest. If it is very low, we can just do it manually. So yeah, guys, this is all about it. This is all about the uh, process of identifying test cases for automation. What do you think about this video? Do you think this will help you? 
please let me know in the comments and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye.